Well, this certainly is going to be a fun topic to talk about. Let's go over two prospects who are currently in the KHL and one more prospect who was in the KHL last year but is now getting ready to suit up in the AHL. So, our topic today here is tough love, and we're taking a look at some guys who are exhibiting the tough love in the moment, with the previous guy we spoke about being somebody who exhibited that tough love last year. We're talking about the KHL, and we're talking about prospects whom a lot of fans of the teams that drafted these prospects are looking forward to. We're talking today about Vancouver Canucks 10th overall pick from the 2019 NHL Entry Draft Facility Pod Colson, Rodion Amirov, 15th overall pick by the Maple Leafs in the 2020 NHL Entry Draft, and we're also talking about... One of the more interesting Montreal Canadiens picks in the previous few drafts, it is Arsen Kisamutdinov, a late round pick, a double, I think it was a triple overager, back from the 2019 NHL Entry Draft 2. So, who exactly are these three guys and why are we talking about tough love? The big one that we've been talking about several times on the YouTube channel is Vasily Podkolzin. He's a Vancouver Canucks guy whom a lot of Vancouver Canucks fans think is the best prospect in the system. He'd been making headlines recently because he was playing in the KHL, he was doing pretty okay in the KHL. However, as time passed on, he started getting less and less ice time in the KHL. So much to the point that he was actually sent down to the VHL, he did some stuff over there, but now he is back in the KHL. He's only played one game in his return, but that game wasn't really a great one. His team lost 2-1 to one to one of the worst teams in the league, and Pod Colson only played 3 minutes and 52 seconds of ice time. He didn't even play a second in the first two periods of the game. Here's a tweet from Chris Faber talking about the game, which was indeed on October 28th, earlier this month. Actually, no, not this month, it's now October. My gosh. SKA just lost 2-1 to one to the worst team in the East Division of the KHL. The team was the Cunlin Red Stars, and they have a 4-14 four record, with 42 goals for and 64 goals against on the season. The first two periods saw absolutely zero seconds of ice time from Bud Colson. So that's a problem, right? As a guy who loves my Vancouver Canucks prospects, taking a look at the stat, taking a look at the overall development and the deployment... It ticks me off. I want this guy to be in a position where he develops, right? Well, okay, let's go over some other examples from other prospects around the NHL and the KHL as to why that request doesn't really seem like something that would come to fruition. Let's go over Rodion Amirov, a recent Toronto Maple Leafs pick and a guy who definitely has his own development curve to conquer as well. At the time of this recording, Amirov has six points in 19 games played in the KHL. Not bad at all. In fact, if you go over to Rodion Amirov's KHL profile, you can take a look at some of the numbers. The guy was getting minutes earlier on, he was up here in the 20s some nights, other nights he was down there in the late teens, but as the season has gone on, some other forwards from his team, the Salavat Yuleyev, had started to come back into the lineup, and as a result, Rodion Amirov has played 5 minutes and 41 seconds in his most recent game, and then there was 4 minutes and 11 seconds the game before that, and then before that he only had 7 minutes as the 13th forward. This is another example of a Russian prospect in the KHL who was a number one piece for the future for the NHL team that drafted him, and he's not getting any playing time either. So, let's go over onto Arsen Kisimutdinov now, because Kisimutdinov is not actually in the KHL. He's waiting for the Laval Rockets season to start up. He'll probably start sometime over there when the AHL gets underway, because he already signed and because he's already here in North America. But, the Montreal Canadiens 22-year-old prospect was in the KHL last year, where, in 31 games played, with the, oh my goodness, Neftechnemic Nizneckamps. I apologize for butchering that. He only had 3 points in 31 games played, which is not great. That's really not good. Especially for a guy that was 21 years old, he was playing in the second pro league after dominating the MHL a season prior. That's not great. That's really not great. And if you take a look at Arsene Kisimutinov's game log from back around that time frame, you can see games where he had 4 minutes of ice time, 8 minutes, 7 minutes. One night he only had 3 minutes and 55 seconds of ice time. Throughout the entire season though, for 2019-2020, he averaged 10 minutes per game. But this is kind of the story that ignites us as to what exactly 
is happening with the rest of the guys that we're seeing now. Even though Kisamutinov is not in the KHL anymore, we can use his experience to kind of go over what exactly is going on with Pod Colson and Amirov on the Canucks and Leafs side of things. Take a look at this article over here published on TVA Sports back by Nicholas Cloutier all the way back in May. There's a quote in this article from Igor Ironko, who was the Elliot Friedman of the KHL, but now he's actually in an assistant GM position, so that's very good for Igor Ironko. He said this about Arsene Kisimutinov, the guy who only had three points in 30-something games played. I think that he would have gotten more playing time if he had wanted to stay and sign a contract extension. When the KHL teams know that a player will not return, they simply refuse to help him develop in any way. Which is why Arsene Kisimutinov, in the last year of his KHL contract, was really not given an opportunity to develop by the guys over there in the KHL system. The idea, the philosophy behind it is, well, this guy is not going to play for us next year, so what's the point in allowing him to develop, get better, and leave? Why don't we give that ice time? to somebody who we know is going to stay here for the extended future. And not that Arsene Kisimutinov guy, who we know is going to sign a contract with the Canadians once this season is over. And the same can be said about Vasily Podkolzin, who was over here after he got drafted saying, yup, I'm going to play two full seasons in Russia. I have a contract in the KHL. I'm going to honor it. After that, I'm going to the NHL. Vancouver? You guys are going to get me later, but it'll be two years before we see that happening. So, now Vasily Podkolzin is in that last season. The season where he is going to finish off his KHL career for the extended foreseeable future. Now, he's in a spot where they're only giving him three minutes of ice time because they know, hey, this guy's not going to play for us. Just screw off. And this isn't a video where I say that that's right. Absolutely not. I'm telling it like it is, because this is how the Russian hockey systems have actually kind of built their reputation when it comes to developing NHL prospects. Rodion Amirov for the Leafs is a guy whose contract also ends in 2021, so his contract is the same length up until the end as Pod Colson, so we will see what happens with Amirov. And it's kind of why the Salavat Yuleyev, who is a team that's actually doing really well in the KHL standings at the moment, is refusing to give this guy any playing time because they don't care about NHL prospect development. They care about winning games, and they want to win more games with the players who they know are going to be there longer than the guys whose time on the team is ephemeral. So, it definitely is not nice to see. You would love to take a look at it and say, okay, Pod Colson, if this guy was in the OHL, for example, this guy would be given top-line minutes, he'd be playing a whole bunch, he'd be on the power play, on the PK, he would be everywhere. And the same could be said about Amirov. But at the end of the day, it's the price you pay when it comes to developing in a system against men in the second best hockey league in the world. However, in circumstances that put you at a disadvantage. So, the best we can do as fans is hope that giving Pod Colson three minutes a night for a whole season is not going to slow him down. Hopefully, by the time he reaches the Utica Comets or the Vancouver Canucks, most likely the Vancouver Canucks next season, he's in a spot where he overcomes all the stuff that he had in the previous year where he wasn't giving any playing time, etc. When Rodion Amirov comes over to the Marlies or the Leafs in 2021-2022, we'll see if a similar thing happens to him. And for Arsene Kisimutinov, a guy who was a triple overager when he was drafted, we will see what is hopefully an immediate bounce back in the Laval Rocket system, because this is a guy who, honestly, I think is probably one of the more underrated talents the Canadians have in their prospect system. He is 22, which is very not young in comparison to a lot of the other guys they have, but what the Habs did with this pick was they took a look at it and they said, this guy has a shot. This guy is very, very strong as a goal scorer, and if there's any opportunity for this guy to ever come to North America, if there is ever any interest for him to come overseas, we're going to get his rights first, we're going to say dibs, and he's going to have to come to us because there's no free agency going around here for a guy whom we picked up at the end of the 2019 draft. So talk to me in the comments about Rodion Amirov, Vasily Podkolzin, Arsen Kisimutinov, and the tough love going on in Russia right now. For Kisimutinov, we'll see the rebound effect because he'll hopefully be given an opportunity with Alex Burrows and the rest of the Laval Rocket staff. And for Podkolzin and Amirov, hopefully we see these guys bounce back in a year after playing what is projecting to be a somewhat disappointing 2020-2021 in the KHL. I hope you enjoyed this video.
and bye. <laughs>